In this edition of Campus Reports, Annie Brihani tells us about some new construction that you might want to avoid. Janelle Newman tells us what students are really spending their student loans on. Sonia Rivera visits a local radio station to find out what they're doing to help people being affected by current issues and need answers. And Robert Gasway tells us where people go who have a weakness for hot and spicy foods that will numb your taste buds. I'm Kimberly Morris. And I'm Saba Mohammed. All this and more on Campus Reports. Local coverage. Student perspectives. At the University of New Mexico. From the KME studios, this is Campus Report. When Big Eye Construction was finally completed, Albuquerque residents enjoyed a long sigh of relief. However, since then, many new projects have gone underway. One in particular has been causing construction problems is the reconstruction of the Washington Bridge. Marcus Grudley explains. It's just going to be a, a, the original way the bridge was before. We're just uh, redoing it. Although the project is not supposed to take long, traffic does need to find a new route. San Mateo Bridge is the alternate right now. So longtime drivers around Albuquerque, be sure to keep those eyes out for those all too familiar detour signs. Tuition and book fees are due. You're late on paying, but you don't have any money. When this happens to some students, they get student loans. Janelle Newman tells us why students shouldn't misuse student loans. Many students at the University of New Mexico have their parents, scholarships, and jobs to pay for their education. However, people who are struggling to pay for college rely on student loans. Brian Malone is the executive yeah. director at the okay. UNM Financial Aid Office. He says that students have to sign a promissory note that describes their loan intent and responsibilities. Once they're awarded, that's only a part of it. Then they would need to complete a promissory note with their lender and also complete what's called entrance counseling, which goes over their rights and responsibilities with having a loan, which that's like one of the things, the responsibilities that you're using it for educational expenses. The promissory note doesn't stop some students from spending their loan on other things. UNM senior Rosalinda Olivas used her loan for her personal expenses. Um, I actually used it um, to pay <laughs> bills <laughs> and to buy my car. UNM senior Jody Mullen has used student loans primarily for educational expenses, but she says she also bought a couple extra things. Um, but I did buy a laptop and the excess that I got was for fun stuff. <laughs> fun stuff like? Um, probably stuff I didn't need, you know, some, some new shoes, maybe a purse. Olivas and Milan both received more than $2,500. The UNM Financial Aid Office determines the amount of the loan. A first-year student can receive up to $2,625. If you have completed your first year, you can receive up to $7,500. If you have completed two years of study, you may receive up to $10,500. All of these amounts may vary depending on your eligibility. If a student fails to pay a loan, there are consequences for the borrower and even the university. If we had a high default rate, we could not give a student one payment for the fall semester. We'd have to give them two payments. We'd have to give them one at the beginning of the semester and the second half of the money at the middle of the semester. The average student will have an estimated $26,119 in debt. So the next time you take out a student loan for a new pair of shoes instead of books, you should think about the consequences of misusing loans. This is Janelle Newman reporting. With current worries of immigration reform in the United States, many immigrants, illegal or not, have questions about their status in the country and don't know where to turn for help. Campus Reports' Sony Rivera visited a local radio station that is doing its part to help immigrants answer those questions. Every weekday morning, you can hear the laughter and playful personalities of René León and Santa Andasola during their morning show, El Basilón de la Mañana, on 97.7 Radio Lobo. But every Friday morning, the music stops for an hour and these playful DJs tackle serious issues. 
From 8 to 9, a representative from the Mexican consulate and another guest joined the DJs to take calls and answer questions about immigration and other important issues. Yeah, just uh, depending on what it is, yeah. If it's, uh, if it's something about health, then we try to bring in somebody that, that is dedicated to that. And Dasola explains how the segment came about. There was a need for information for our community and our listeners, and there was so much confusion. And with the change of immigration reform and with the changes in politics, uh, there really was nowhere for them to go. And there was a, a Mexican consulate, and that service was available to them, but there was a bridge between the communities and, and the Mexican consulate that, that needed to be formed. And I, I think that's where Radio Lobo came in. The Mexican consulate deputy consul Alberto Bernal says the segment is an effective way to reach those with questions and for those people to reach the consulate. Sometimes people is not able to, to come to the consulate because they are living far or they are working at the time. However, it's easy for them to reach a phone, dial a phone number, and contact the, uh, contact the station. Even though Radio Lobo is a commercial radio station that plays music, the segment is free of it. Since, since the beginning, we, we saw that it was necessary to, to have a full hour of just, just uh, information and service to the community. And, and by playing music, in the hour, you would take would take time from either taking a call or answering more questions. But Leon says the station still profits. We we profit by by serving the community, you know, giving 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 them the information that they need. That Hispanic community goes beyond those of Mexican descent. But we're not about Mexico and Mexicans and the Mexican consulate. We're about people and their rights and the information that they deserve. This does not exclude non-Spanish speakers. There's no limit. There's, there's uh, listeners that don't speak Spanish but are married to people that are from other countries. So why would we limit ourselves if our listeners haven't limited themselves in their lives? Bernal says the system works. Fortunately, we are successful in this and we feel this with the phone calls. And the success is probably due to the one thing the segment focuses on. Serving the community. A better community overall. Basically focused on uh, uh, community matters. For Campus Reports, I'm Sonia Rivera. If any organization would like to get on the show, just contact Radio Lobo or the consulate. The main requirement is that you have to be a non for profit organization. Some like it hot, others like it so hot that they gather annually with hopes of achieving a meltdown. Robert Gassaway shows us how a unique food show created the hottest weekend in Albuquerque. For some people, plain old spicy just doesn't cut it. Chili heads like their food hot, hot, hot. And at the annual fiery foods show in Albuquerque, chili heads tap into tongue burning foods that range from jelly to java. Whereas many food connoisseurs enjoy a perfect coordination of appetizer, entree, and fine wine, chili heads are more likely to take an approach that seems half daredevil, half rodeo. Sauces with names like Death Sauce and Slap Ya Mama are creatively pitched to consumers alongside t-shirts touting their enthusiasm. Salesman Sean Knight uses physical humor to promote his product. I'm with Gringo Bandito Hot Sauce, and our hot sauce has eight different peppers in it. Okay, I can only tell you about three. Habanero, jalapeno, and the Japanese chili pepper. I can't tell you about the other chilies because it's top secret, and the last time I told somebody, my boss cut off my thumb. <laughs> then I made the mistake of doing it again. He cut off my other thumb. <laughs> I learned my lesson. Don't tell Gringo Bandito secrets. The whole genre of fiery food seems to attract people who are characters, or perhaps they're like lawyers who ride Harleys. They just like to pose as characters. One way to do that is by collecting sauces and paraphernalia. You'll find people wearing chilies and drinking out of cups labeled Triple Extreme. All the while, they're not taking it all that seriously. Showgoer Jay Schnitz has a chili-driven sense of adventure. It's a good adrenaline rush. It's legal. <laughs> what can I say? It goes good with beer. Chili heads have fun with food, yet they spend serious money on it. Vendors like Sharon Teagues, Stephen Bobbitt, and Pepper Man are amazed by the burning passion of food show patrons. We sell out. 
Yeah, we sell out all the product we bring. This is by far the best. One of the best shows, I think, worldwide as far as a, a chili hot pepper fest. They opened the door at 11 o'clock in the morning. There were people lining up an hour before. I used to be able to walk around the shows and harass people. Now I pretty much just have to stand out front because even without the suit on, I'm stuck in an aisle for over a half an hour just trying to get back to the booth. And it's just insane. Still, the daring revelers who make fire eating a pastime aren't fully understood. There's some crazy people in this play in the, at these shows. You know, they just want to be hurt, and it's just weird. Definitely, they're they're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think people who like hot sauce, I think their brain cells are connected to their taste buds, so they kind of burn off, and that's what happens. I don't know, just you know, free spirited folks, uh, long hair, ponytails, and wearing earrings. <laughs> you know, and I guess it brings out the best and the craziness in all of us, I suppose. One thing is for sure. With events like this showcasing the passion of Chili Head culture, the fire will be maintained. This is Robert Gassaway reporting. That's it for this edition. We'll be back in a few days with new news and probably new anchors. No, we're not being fired or even resigning under pressure. We're just stepping aside to give some other journalism students a chance. I'm Saba Mohammed. And I'm Kimberly Morris. Thanks for watching.